You know, there's this app I've been hearing more and more about lately, and it seems like it's a mix of a lot of different tools. It's got aspects of Notion, of Roam Research, of Scrintle, and other visual mapping applications. Today, we're gonna to take a look at Heptabase and give you my first thoughts in taking a look at this personal knowledge management software. Let's dig in. This is what you get when you first get into Heptabase. Now, there are some little tutorial things will pop up to help you understand what Heptabase does. Um, but if you have used LogSeq or Roam Research, Notion, Obsidian, there are some elements of this that are going to feel familiar and some of them that very well might feel foreign because this tool pulls really good ideas from a lot of those tools into one package but the way they interact may not be the same that you're used to in other software. There's a couple different sections you can see here in the tool. There's the journal, which is really your main capture spot. Think your daily note inside of Obsidian or LogSeq. There's the map, which is the overview of all the whiteboards you have in Heptabase. So the main UI concept here is you have a whiteboard that collects cards and on the whiteboard, you interact with those cards, you organize them, you connect them in a way that visually makes sense. So if you're a person who really likes visual organization, if you're drawn to tools like Miro or Mural or Obsidian's Canvas, uh, Heptabase could be a really interesting option for you uh, for a personal knowledge management solution. Now, speaking of cards, there's a whole library of all the cards in your Heptabase um, that they can get remixed into multiple different whiteboards. And so you're not locked into having a card on a whiteboard and only one whiteboard. You can pull in a card about, say, building out a guitar pedal board on this personal whiteboard into another whiteboard. It can live in multiple places. What's interesting about Heptabase, however, is in addition to this layer of cards and whiteboards and visual organization, we'll get into the whiteboards in just a second, is there are tags. Now, tags function differently in Heptabase. They're, they're more akin to a super tag inside of Tana, where it's really a database of sorts. So let's click on this Heptabase tutorial tag. And you can see as we get in here, this is a really familiar database style if you're used to something like Airtable or Notion's database features. You have lots of different ways you can categorize these cards. You can add different properties in here. Um, you can have different views. So if I click on levels, you can see it turns it into a Kanban style view or if I click on a uh, card, you can see it's just organized slightly differently and it's filtered slightly differently. You're gonna feel very at home in the tag view if you've used Notion's databases before. Now this can be really helpful for sorting through ideas. Um, if you want to put everything in kind of one home view from across all of your whiteboards, across all of your, um, all of your cards to try, try to pull together the concepts that you're targeting in one location, uh, while they might be disparate across different whiteboards or in different places or created at different times. Uh, it's a way to unify concepts in one spot, but it allows you a lot more flexibility than just having a single tag, and that's really the only uh, metadata that you're adding to the card. The tag is a gateway to tons of metadata about that card. Really, they're, they're not just tags, they're tag databases is how it works. And so the general flow and idea inside of Heptabase is you would start capturing ideas in your journal. And so say I want to make a video about Heptabase. So I would capture that idea here. This would kind of be my working spot throughout the day. There is a mobile app for Heptabase, but it is capture only. And in fact, it doesn't even bring up this screen. What it does is it basically shoots whatever you put down inside of it into Heptabase. Um, and I believe it comes in as a card. So it's a little goofy uh, for capture. You still might want to use a tool like drafts or something like that to capture thoughts and then put them in and process them yourself. Uh, but if you like Heptabase's mobile app, feel free to use that as well. 
Um, so you would capture this and you can see that there are a bunch of different styling options here, similar to Notion. Uh, there's a block reference here. You can copy the link to this specific block, but more often than not, probably what you're going to do with something like this is turn it into a card. So I'm going to do that right now. I've created a card. You can see it's automatically been linked. If I go to the card library, you can see that here's the card. Now I can dig in here and I can uh, add, you know, video idea. I can turn this into a heading. Um, and then also if I want to, uh, here's metadata down here uh, at the bottom. So it shows where you're linked from in the journal on what day you're talking about this. If I want to add a tag, I can do a project, an action. Um, I can also create a new one called video. And I will do that. And we'll pop out of there. So now if I go into tags, you can see I have a tag called video. And if I want to start adding properties to this, like, well, I'll do a select and I'll say it's for the effect uh, channel. And then I will do uh, effective. Say if I'm running multiple YouTube channels, I want to know where it goes. Or if I want to do a status. Actually, there is a status one here, so we will use that real quick. Status. So you can have multiple properties that uh, cross different tag databases, which is really handy. You don't have to recreate everything every single time that you want to use it. Now let's take a quick look into the map. This is really the big picture of everything going inside of your Heptabase. There's a whiteboard that comes with it out of the box called Getting Started. We'll double click on that and come in. And this is really the crux of how you play with information inside of Heptabase. So while you capture in the journal and you can flesh out uh, atomic ideas in a card, how those ideas fit together comes together on a whiteboard. So you can see here, these are actually, um, these are actually lessons in little areas. So if you're familiar with Obsidian's Canvas, this is gonna feel familiar as well. There are areas that you can create. Um, you can, you know, bundle cards together. This is a card. Uh, if you, you know, if you wanna open it up in a new tab, uh, you can do that. We can go back into there so you can get more in depth with it. These um, lines just draw connections to those cards. If we look into this card, for example, we'll want to look into the metadata. You can see the whiteboards where that card is located, the tags that it has, the different properties that it has. Um, there's more information here too. Um, linked cards, which is really interesting. All cards stored in the card library, cards can mention each other. So you can see the links that are in here. These are outgoing links. You have a summary for that. Um, and these links are also uh, represented visually here on this graph. Now, I'm not exactly sure. I have to do a little bit more digging on this. If these uh, lines actually create the links, I don't think they do, but they're a visual representation anyway. Um, so this is really an interesting way that you can play with I always mess, <laughs> I always can't quite figure out how to navigate around some of these um, whiteboard tools because I'm so used to Miro where you could formerly be able to just like click and drag and move it around. Um, but anyway, <laughs> it gets a little tricky to just have to navigate things with your mouse wheels. Not always the most um, easy thing to do. So for example, one thing that I've been experimenting with here in Heptabase is can I use this for some kind of a high level project tracker? Uh, I'm looking at building a guitar pedal board for some music stuff I'm doing on the side. Um, and so I've listed out this here, like kind of the big picture of, all right, I need a pedal board, I need power supply, I need uh, routing understanding, I want expression pedal. Um, I'm, looking at some specific um, pedals to have on my board. And then this is really kind of building into, all right, what kind of next actions do I need to have here? This experiment didn't really fully work out, but it gives you a sense of how you might want to look at using Heptabase 
um, outside of just PKM. You could use it for organizing personal projects and maybe having a whiteboard per project if they get bigger. Um, some additional user, face, user interface items over here is that there is a sidebar. Uh, you can search for cards or paste web links to kind of have it as a holding ground over here. Um, there is a, the card library you can have here. So if you want to just quickly get something onto your whiteboard, you can drag it onto here. And then I can just make the connection. And then we'll look. And we don't have any outgoing links. So that confirms that. <laughs> so it's a quick, easy way to dump an idea uh, right onto a whiteboard that you're working on. You can also see today's um, journal entry. So you can also pull those ideas in from that way as well. Or you can, current, um, you can just process this as you're working on a specific whiteboard. So there's some really interesting overlap with the different user interface features inside of Heptabase. Um, you can import from Markdown, from PDF, uh, as a card anyway, uh, not <laughs> lots of PDFs and information from the PDF. And it has an Obsidian import feature where you can choose a file or a zip of Obsidian, your Obsidian folder to import into here. Um, there's search, there's help and documentation. You could just add a new card here. Keyboard shortcuts as well. There is a dark mode. And so if I go into settings, click on to dark mode, looks pretty decent. I, I like the multicolored icons they have over here, it really makes them pop. Um, the gradients that they have look really quite nice. Um, I'm gonna keep it in light mode for now, but just so you know, you have that option. You can uh, download your backup. This is a cloud app as well. And one of the big caveats with Heptabase is that to even try it out, you have to pay, which is completely different than a lot of software as a service style apps. They usually get you in the door for free, and then if you want extra features or more opportunities to use it, then you pay. Heptabase has gone the slow scale route in their um, business building practice, which I think is kind of smart, uh, but you do end up having to pay, I believe it's around 10 bucks a month to get in to check out Heptabase to begin with. So that's why I'm doing this video, so that you can get a sense for what Heptabase is like without having to dive in, and then you can make the decision for yourself if you want to make that uh, extra jump into paying for Heptabase and trying it out for a month or two. Well, that's really it with Heptabase. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful. I think it's a really interesting app that combines a lot of interesting and useful features from different apps into a very unique expression of a personal knowledge management tool. But what do you think? I would love to hear from you in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching this video here on Effective. My name is Justin. I'll catch you in the next one, but until then, stay effective.